Hi, this is Nick Butler from the Charleston County Public Library. I'm standing here in Marion Square in Charleston, South Carolina, in what many people think of as kind of the central park of this old city. But it may surprise you to learn that this park is very much outside of the original boundary of Colonial Charlestown. So this is a place that sees a lot of action today in uh, all kinds of events, special events and, and holiday celebrations in Charleston, farmers markets, Spoleto USA Festival. There are always people gathering in Marion Square. But this is a place that has a very deep history that's rather convoluted and changed many times in the past 300 years. So in the next few minutes, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the chronology of Marion Square history, going back to the late colonial era and going all the way up to the 20th century to try to describe how Marion Square got to be the public gathering place that it is today. Marion Square is on the north side of Calhoun Street between King Street on my right and Meeting Street on my left. And this seems like it's in the middle of Charleston, but we're north of the colonial city. This was Mr. Rag's pasture in the first half of the 18th century. This was a fenced in pasture that you would have passed by on your way into Charleston. King Street behind me was the only road leading in and out of Charleston in colonial times. So people passed by here uh, and saw the cows munching on the grass in the pasture as they were going into town. But in 1757, the government of South Carolina decided that they needed to build a fortified gateway leading into Charleston. This was actually going to be the third gateway leading into Charleston. And so they negotiated with the Rag family and purchased the area where I'm standing right now and similar property on the other side of King Street purchased from the Manigo family. A total of 15 acres were purchased on the north side of Charleston and the government built a large fortress called a hornwork. And that hornwork was made of tabby. It's an oyster shell cement. And uh, this piece of tabby that's standing today in Marion Square is all that remi remains of once was a large uh, fortification. The hornwork was approximately 10 acres in size and it was started in 1757 and left unfinished in the spring of 1760. And this hornwork was reactivated and actually finished during the American Revolution, during which time it functioned as the command post for the American defenses during the British siege of Charleston in the spring of 1780. So imagine standing here during the American Revolution. I'm inside of the hornwork. Outside of that would have been the British Army uh, bombarding Charleston. And within this approximately 10 acre fort were hundreds of soldiers. And this was enclosed on the backside towards Calhoun Street in the spring of 1780 and literally called a citadel. It was the place of refuge for the American Army in times of emergency. And the Americans surrendered to the British on the 12th of May, 1780. And the Hornwork survived the American Revolution. But after the war, the city of Charleston was incorporated in 1783 and peace reigned in South Carolina. The collective fortifications of the city were all scraped away and the Hornwork was mostly demolished in 1784. And the city of Charleston inherited this property from the state government and the city decided to try to subdivide and lease out this property. So where I'm standing was divided into 40 small lots that were leased to individuals and businesses in the late 18th and early 19th century. And this surviving fragment of the tabby wall probably formed someone's garden wall in the early 19th century. So in the early 19th century, the city of Charleston was actually using parts of Marion Square as a picket guard or, or a police substation, if you will. In the 1820s or early 1830s, a police picket station was built right about here, which replaced one on the other side of Marion Square over towards Meeting Street that was built around 1805. One of the defining features of Marion Square today is the building behind me known as the Old Citadel. So this is a building that was commissioned by the state government of South Carolina. In December of 1822. It wasn't completed until 1829 and opened as a guardhouse and as an arsenal. So there were a, a garrison of soldiers residing in the Citadel building. 
1833, the city of Charleston sold all of what we now know as Marion Square to the field officers of the 4th Brigade of the South Carolina Militia to enable the local militia units, people who are living here in the city of Charleston, to be able to parade and drill on this ground we now call Marion Square. So it passed out of city hands in 1833. A decade later, in early 1843, the Citadel building behind me was transformed into the South Carolina Military Academy and opened for cadets and became a training school that became known as the Citadel, uh, but technically still called the Military Academy of South Carolina. And this building functioned as a Citadel school until the early 20th century. So from 1833 until 1922, when the Citadel moved to its present campus, this was a parade ground that was being used by cadets and militia soldiers on a regular basis. But in 1882, after the American Civil War, the city of Charleston negotiated with the field officers of the 4th Brigade of the South Carolina Militia to be able to find a different use for this park, at least part-time. In 1882, the city partnered with the uh, militia to be able to use Marion Square as a part-time public park. So on some days of the week, you would find cadets and uh, other military uh, personnel parading and drilling on this site. And other days of the week, you might find civilians perambulating through here, and especially right after the American Civil War. Starting in 1866 and 1867, there were people playing baseball. The first games of baseball played right here in Marion Square. And on really a special occasions, maybe once or twice a year, a traveling circus would come to town. So from the 1850s to the end of the 19th century, this is a place where Charlestonians would gather to see elephants and camels and lions and tigers under a big top tent to witness circus activity. Even after the city of Charleston renamed this park Marion Square in October of 1882, most people in town continue to call it Citadel Square as in Citadel Square Baptist Church directly behind me. So this became a public space as well as the Citadel's parade ground into the early 20th century. The Citadel moved to their new campus on the west side of the Charleston Peninsula in 1922. And this building became used in the 1930s as County of Charleston office space. Where I'm standing in the 1940s was mostly being used as a parking lot and there was very little civic activity here in Marion Square. But in the early 1950s, the city of Charleston partnered with the Rotary Club of Charleston to really spruce up things. Electrical wires were put in, electric lights to illuminate this on summer evenings. There were trees planted around the perimeter of what had once been the parade ground and all kinds of shrubbery planted and benches for the public to enjoy when they came to visit. But one of the most distinctive features about the landscape of Marion Square today is this gravel X that traverses through the park diagonally. I'm standing in the middle of Marion Square. This is a product of the 1952 renovation spearheaded by the Rotary Club of Charleston. And it's been here for over 60 years now. And it's one of the most common ways to traverse Marion Square, whether you're getting from King Street to Meeting Street, uh, or to Calhoun Street, you have to walk through one of these gravel uh, pathways. And when there are special events in Charleston today, you're likely to see tents all over the place in Marion Square, whether it's a food and wine festival or a fashion show or Spoleto USA or another kind of special event. There are tents covering the landscape, and those tents are often hammering stakes into the ground. And as a historian, it's, I'm always conscious of the fact that the very large hornwork that once dominated Marion Square is just below the surface. The tabby foundations of the eastern half of that colonial era hornwork is still underneath us today. And there is a project, uh, ongoing project, to map and do more uh, ground penetrating radar to discover the exact location of those foundations so we can do a better job of interpreting the many layers of history here in Marion Square. But that's going to take a little bit more work and more community attention. So if you're interested in learning more about Marion Square, I encourage you to take a look at the Charleston County Public Library's website 
And if you're interested in learning more about the history of this specific piece of ground, check out episodes 21 and 22 of the Charleston Time Machine. I've written a couple of essays about this. And there is ongoing work with the horn work. Uh, trying to locate that here. So stay tuned in the future for more information about the colonial era horn work and that citadel that formed the command post for the American troops here that were defending the British siege of Charleston in 1780. So until next time, I'm Nick Butler from the Charleston County Public Library. Thanks for joining me.